and it's here on the coast of Sicilia, Philippi, that Jesus asked a most profound and pertinent question. A question that was asked 2,000 years ago, and it's a question that is still being asked today. Who do men say that I am? You see, by now, Jesus' fame had spread abroad. In less than 33 years, Jesus has stirred up Judea and the surrounding area. You see, in Matthew 1, we are given his lineage and miraculous birth. In chapter 2, his escape from Herod and the visit of the wise men. In chapter 3, he is baptized by John the Baptist and his father in heaven declared, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. His 40 day fast and the temptation are outlined in chapter 4, while in chapter 5 to 7, he delivers his sermon on the mount. He cleanses the leper, he heals the sick, he cast out demons in chapter 8, forgave sins, raised the dead, and healed the blind. In in chapter 9, chosen and sent out his disciples in chapter 10. In chapter 11, he rebuked those same cities where he had performed mighty works. In chapter 12, he has upset the scribes and Pharisees by healing on the Sabbath. Offended people with his parable in chapter 13. Fed 5,000, walked on the sea, and was rejected in Nazareth in chapter 14. And healed the great multitude and fed another 4,000 in chapter 15. And so it's in this context and background with the dealings with the people that Jesus asked this question. You see, Jesus was curious as to what was the word on the street concerning himself. And so he asked the question of his disciple, who do men say that I am? Who do men say? That I am. And in my mind's eyes, I can see a hand coming up as a disciple, keen to answer the question, pronounced, Some say, You are John the Baptist. But how could he be John the Baptist? Because John the Baptist baptized Jesus in Matthew 3. Look, I'm just telling you what I've heard. I hear that too, and I've also heard that some said that you are Elijah. But how can the master be Elijah when Jesus told us in chapter 11, if you would receive it, John the Baptist was the Elijah to come? Yes, I know, but that's what people are saying. What about you guys? What have you heard? Well, I've heard that you are Isaiah or one of the prophets. Okay, peeps, I hear what the word is on the outside, but I want to wanna bring it home. You, my, my friends, you, my buddies, you, my fellow colleagues in ministry, whom I have lived with, whom I have traveled with, who do you think I am? And without hesitation, Peter, impetuous Peter, declared with conviction, you are the Christ the son of the living God. After hearing Peter's bold declaration, Jesus looked at Peter in verse 17 and said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee, but my Father in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This statement by Christ has caused misunderstanding and confusion in Christendom for years. Two schools of thoughts exist. On the one hand, there are those who teach that Peter is the rock on which Jesus laid the foundation of the church. After all, it is argued, Peter, from the Greek Petros, means rock or rock man. And his other name, Cephas, in Aramaic, means rock or stone. In fact, the Roman church insists that Peter was more than a rock. They suggested that Christ designated and nominated Peter as the first pope. 
But is Peter really the rock on which the church is built? I said, is Peter really the rock on which the church is built? And so I went to Edward Mout, who replied, no. So I asked him why, and he said, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the free speaker's frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. The solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Still not con con convinced, I went to Samuel J. Stone, who reminded me that the church has one foundation. Jesus Christ the Lord. She is a new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride and with his own blood bought her and for her life he died. Amen. See, contrary to popular beliefs, Jesus was not referring to Peter when he said, upon this rock I will build my church. But he was referring to the revelation that, G, that Peter received that he, Jesus, was the Christ, the Son of the living God. And it was upon that rock, the rock that he, Jesus, was the Christ, that the church was built. You see, there is no way in heaven, earth, that the church was built upon Peter or any man or any woman. In fact, immediately after commending Peter, Jesus had to rebuke Peter. If you read Matthew 16, 23, it says, But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offence unto me, for thou savourest not the things of God, but of men. And this was the same Peter that denied Jesus three times. 